There are some absolutely terrible clone troopers in Star Wars. Clone Trooper Slick betrayed his brothers and sold out to the Separatists. Then there's Cut Lawclaim, who deserted the Republic Army to make a life of his own. He was a farmer who had a wife and kids. Honestly, he made the smart decision to leave the army just so he could live on his own terms. I just don't like the fact that he abandoned his brothers. Then there's a squad of clones who, through no fault of their own, get infected by genotes and parasites. The first one infected is Scythe, who purposely infects his squad mates so they can attack Ahsoka and Varys. Two more clones, Ox and Edge, directly attack Ahsoka and Varys. Luckily, the encounter alerts the Padawans of the situation, but not before Trap is killed by Varys. Unfortunately, the troopers spread the parasite to Varys. If it weren't for Ahsoka's heroics, they might have all died. Of course, we can't forget the clone troopers who appeared in one scene, only to die instantly. Buzz gets taken out by Geonosians after he and Luminara are sent to investigate the whereabouts of Poggle the Lesser. When Anakin and Obi-Wan go with the 212th Battalion to rescue Luminara, Gearshift is killed by zombie Geonosians. Cosmos and Hawkeye are both taken out by the Zillow Beast. Hawkeye fell into the sinkhole created by the Ion Proton Bomb, and Cosmos is killed on Coruscant. While protecting Duchess Satine, Mixer and Red Eye casually crack jokes right before they're wiped out by a Separatist droid. Later, Cad Bane kills clone troopers Koho and Denal. Cad Bane puts on Denal's armor and impersonates him and is able to escape because of it. But the worst death of all is Cut Up. Cut Up was a part of Domino Squad, which had fives and Echo. No one ever took Cut-Up seriously, and Cut-Up never took anything seriously. Domino Squad's first assignment was at the Rishi Outpost, which protected Kamino. When Commando Droids ambush the clones, the commanding officer on Niner, as well as troopers Nub and Droid Bait, are killed. Luckily, the rest of Domino Squad escapes the base, only for Cut-Up to be immediately eaten by a massive space worm. The crazy thing is that there were an estimated 600 million or more clones produced by the Kaminoans in Star Wars. Of those 600 million, over 1,000 are named in different books, comics, and shows. In the Star Wars The Clone Wars TV show alone, over 100 are named, and I'm going to be ranking each and every clone from the show, so that means we've got about 80 more clones to go. On Umbara, Troopers Oz and Ringo accidentally step on landmines. They should have been more careful, but at least this saved the rest of the 501st from enduring the same fate. At the Citadel, Charger loses his foothold while climbing a rocky ledge and falls to his death when he hits an electro mine. Unfortunately, this alerts the entire base to the clone's presence. His comrade, Longshot, is electrocuted to death by the prison's security fences when they're activated. That's a tough way to go. But let's not forget all the heroic clone pilots who died in the war. On a diplomatic mission to Florum, clone trooper Mac's ship is shot down, and he dies in the crash, leaving Jar Jar Banks on his own against the pirates. Luckily, Jar Jar survives and escapes the pirates. Then there's Matchstick. His fighter is shot down by vulture droids. That was bad enough already, but to make things even worse, Matchstick lost control of his ship and crashed into his wingmate Tag. Both ships explode upon impact. Clone Troopers Slammer, Tucker, and Axe all get completely destroyed by vulture droids over Ryla. The thing is though, it wasn't their fault. Their commander, Ahsoka, disobeys Anakin's orders, and her squadron pays the price. Their fighters were left without protection from the Republic's cruisers, allowing the masses of vulture droids to pick them apart. Luckily, clone pilot Swoop survived the Separatist onslaught. He was promoted to group leader after the deaths of his comrades and led a second attempt to break the blockade at Ryloth, which was successful. Clone Trooper Engel, however, got even more lucky. During an attack from Grievous, his Y-Wing was shot down by vulture droids. Miraculously, his fighter crashes into the hangar of a Republic cruiser. The crash killed his wingman, but Engel survived. Obi-Wan notices the crash and rescues Engel from the wreckage. His fellow squadmate Killer doesn't have a miracle up his sleeve, though. His ship exploded after it was hit by vulture droids right before Engel was shot down. But that's not as bad as Cameron, Flash, and Lucky. After their Republic cruiser crashes, they're killed by Mastiffs on Meridon. Ironically, Captain Rex is able to fight off these Mastiffs by himself. Not so lucky after all, I guess. Remember Sergeant Slick, who was a traitor and a Separatist spy? He had a whole squad under his command who helped bring him to justice. Slick frames Clone Trooper Chopper for being the spy. Luckily, his squadmates Gus, Punch, and Sketch are able to deduce that it is impossible for Chopper to be the spy. This eventually leads the suspicion to be on Slick. Chopper sees Slick making a transition to the Separatists and tells Rex and Cody. That's all Rex and Cody need to do to arrest Slick. Luckily, he's only able to destroy some of the barracks' weapons and ammunition. If it weren't for Chopper and his squad, Slick could have made things a lot worse. Presumably, these guys survived for a long time after their campaign on Christophsis. Unlike Troopers Niner and Bell, they were on a mission with Kit Fisto to capture Newt Gunray when a Magna Guard blew up their ship with a rocket launcher. Bell and Niner were just chilling on the ship while Kit Fisto was getting ambushed by Grievous. They had no clue what was happening. Speaking of not knowing what was happening, Captain Vaughn of the 501st was lured into an ambush by Mandalorian commandos during the Siege of Mandalore. All the clones under his command are completely wiped out because of this blunder, and Vaughn dies with them. Next up, ranked at number 60, we have a clone trooper named Hound, an ARF trooper who leads his massive, Grizzer, while hunting Ahsoka on Coruscant. This is his only appearance, but I think we can all agree he looks super cool. Another clone with a short appearance is Commander Doom. He served on Ringo Venda alongside the Jedi sisters Tip Lee and Tip Lar. He's designed and named after the Marvel villain Doctor Doom, and we see that in his unique colored armor. What's unique about Clone Trooper Crasher was his age. 
You can tell from his receding hairline that he was much older than most of the clones. Because of this, he had been sidelined from battle. However, he still found a way to serve by passing on his wisdom to younger clones. We see him leading a unit of the Clone Youth Brigade when Boba Fett infiltrates the group. Unfortunately, Boba takes down the Republic cruiser that Crasher was on, and presumably he died in the carnage. That's not as bad as how Clone Commander Havoc died. After he was injured on the battlefield at Kamino, Clone Defect 99 tried to help save Havoc. Instead, Havoc berates 99, telling him he shouldn't be at the battle site. Then Havoc is promptly shot in the head by separatist droids. You shouldn't have disrespected 99, buddy, but that's not as brutal as these next clones' deaths. While protecting the Jedi Temple on Devaron from Savage Opress, ARF Trooper Trauma bravely runs forward to confront Savage, even as Savage runs through nearly a dozen clones. In typical Savage fashion, he quickly finishes Trauma. Then there's Commander Colt. Like Havoc, he was in charge of training cadets on Kamino. Unlike Havoc, Colt didn't stand a chance. At the Battle of Kamino, he has the unlucky fate of running into Asajj Ventress herself. She impales him on her lightsaber, and then gives him a kiss on the cheek for good measure. Colt died to a Sith though, so that's fair. At least it wasn't some random animal. But imagine dying to one of your own Jedi generals. Commander Gree and Captain Jack found this out the hard way, that taking out a Jedi is easier said than done. On Kashyyyk, after being given Order 66 from Palpatine, they tried to kill Master Yoda. Yoda, sensing their betrayal, promptly decapitates them both. Which sucks, because both of these guys are pretty cool troopers aside from this. Gree served in Green Company under Master Luminara Unduli. He's instrumental in different campaigns, ranging from Geonosis to Kashyyyk. He's also instrumental in capturing New Gunray and bringing the traitor, Captain Argaius, to justice. And in the first ever episode of the Clone Wars, Jek serves with Yoda and helps defeat the droid battalion on Tordaria. The other two clones that were with Jek on Tordaria are shock troopers Riz and Thyre. They both served with Yoda and were very loyal to him. Ironically, they appear again in Revenge of the Sith when Palpatine orders them to search the Senate for Yoda after Sidious and Yoda's duel. At the number 50 spot, I've got Commander Fox. Yes, I know Fox killed Fives, and most of you probably hate him for that, but how could you expect Fox to refuse an order from Chancellor Palpatine himself? Palps was probably influencing Fox's mind anyway, since Palpatine really needed Fives' discoveries to be covered up. When it all comes down to it, Fox was a very loyal trooper who was dedicated to doing his duty, whether that meant protecting important senators or bringing criminals to justice. Unlike many clones on this list, Fox lives through Order 66 and serves the Empire for a brief time. Unfortunately, Darth Vader ends up choking Fox to death when Fox and his men fail to capture the Jedi librarian Jocasta Nu. Speaking of clone commanders, at number 49, I've got Commander Bly. Bly was the leader of the 327th Battalion under Ayla Sakura. Bly was trained as an ARC trooper in addition to having commander status in the army. He saw a lot of action in the Clone Wars, specifically when we see him at Geonosis, Quell, and Meridun in the Clone Wars. On Felucia and Order 66, Bly and his men execute Master Sakura. Post Order 66, Bly was integrated into Imperial service. After that, it's not known what became of him. We also don't know what happened to Commander Nao either. Nao led the 91st Mobile Reconnaissance Corps, and he developed a special skill for riding bark speeders. We see him used his skill on a speeder to eliminate his commander, Jedi Stas Ali, in Revenge of the Sith. After that, Nao was also integrated into the Imperial Army. But we do know what happened to Special Forces pilot Contrail. Contrail was a part of Shadow Squadron, an elite strike force in the Republic Navy, and a part of the Wolf Pack. He served in the mission to destroy the Malevolence, among others. In Legends, he continued his service with the Empire, when Shadow Squadron became Vader's personal force. He even personally saved Vader after Vader crashed his TIE Fighter. Unfortunately, later, Contrail was killed by Marauders. Speaking of which, let's get back to some more clone pilots. Clone Command Commander Blackout was a special ops trooper in charge of the cloaked corvette that Anakin used at the Battle of Christophsis against Admiral Trench. Blackout and his crew were instrumental in the Republic's success at the battle. Special ops trooper Spark was arguably the most important though. He was called on at the last minute to replace one of his comrades. As a rookie, Spark performed admirably on the mission, leading to him receiving a commendation from his commander, Blackout. Another elite forces group was Shadow Squadron, a team personally trained by Anakin Skywalker. One of the best members of Shadow Squadron was Broadside, who flew the most missions alongside Anakin. In the Clone Wars show, he took part in attacking the Malevolence and defending Kamino from the Separatist attack, among other missions. Another elite pilot was Warthog, serving in the Wolf Pack under Plo Koon. He is seen assisting Master Plo in multiple rescue missions, first to save Ahsoka on Felucia, and also to save the Togrutan slaves on Kadavo. Speaking of rescues, I can't go without mentioning the 501st gunship pilot, Hawk. Hawk personally flew Anakin, Rex, and other notable 501st troopers into battle, but he was also called in to evacuate them on multiple occasions as well. He rescued Anakin and Rex from Kostovsis and Teth. Remember Commander Colt and Commander Havoc, who died terrible deaths on Kamino? Both of them served in Rancor Battalion, which suffered heavy losses in the Separatist invasion of Kamino. But Arc Troopers Blitz and Hammer both survived the invasion. Hammer was critical in defeating the Separatists, as he got his men into position to take out multiple Trident droids. Next on my list, I've got two more troopers from the Wolf Pack, Boost and Kamen. They were known as exceptional fighters who served on numerous missions with Wolf and Plo Koon. They flew with jetpacks during the rescue mission on Kadavo, heroically saving and catching falling slaves. Their commander, Wolf, 
later commented in Star Wars Rebels that the local with all fighters fought like his wolfpack, mentioning Boost and Comet as great fighters. One of the most unique clones on this list, though, is Commander Jet. Jet led a battalion of flame troopers under Master Kiati Mundi. Jet's squad had an important role in the Second Battle of Geonosis, torching Geonosian hives to secure the planet. Some may call it a war crime, but I say it's one of the coolest things in the Clone Wars. Who cares about a few bugs anyway? Two more clones that served in the Second Battle of Geonosis were Boyle and Trapper, who were part of Cody's 212th Battalion. Trapper was the only survivor in Obi-Wan Kenobi's landing group at Point Rain. They were able to survive until they were rescued by Boyle. One of their comrades in the 212th, Wooly, also served with them on a mission to Ryloth. Wooly had previously been a prisoner of war, but was freed by Kenobi and Boyle. Wooly and Cody provided a distraction for Obi-Wan, Boyle, and Trapper so they could rescue Twi'lek prisoners. Once they were free, Master Windu was cleared to destroy the rest of the Separatist forces, freeing Ryloth from the Separatists. Mace's clone commander, Pons, was also there on Ryloth with Wooly and the rest of the 212. Known as CT-411, Pons was one of the first 500 clones ever made, and he was personally trained by Jango Fett. In addition to accompanying Mace to Ryloth, Pons also saw action at the first battle of Geonosis with Mace Windu. Pons commanded a Spa T special walker that helped bring down a Separatist core ship. You probably remember Pons when he was captured and held hostage by Or Singh, Boba Fett, and Bosk. Boba wanted to lure out Mace Windu, so their plan was to execute the hostages one by one until Mace met their demand. Pons was the first to go shot in the back of the head by Aura. Such a disappointing way to go for a veteran in the clone army, with his arms bound and on his knees. Commander Neo, who I mentioned earlier, would replace Pons as commander of the 91st Corps, so at least Pons had to avoid having to execute his Jedi generals. Two men that served with Pons and Mace on Ryloth were ARF troopers Razor and Stack. Out of all the troopers in the 91st that Mace could have chosen to accompany him to sneak onto the Separatist base at Ryloth, he chose Razor and Stack, which I think is a testament to their abilities. They single-handedly took over the control room of the droid's base and opened the bridge so the rest of the Twi'lek force could invade. Then, when commando droids came for backup, Razor and Stack took them on, resorting to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat to defeat the commando droids, which is an extraordinary feat for clones. Two of the most underrated troopers in the Clone Wars, for sure. Too bad we didn't get to see more of them. One clone you probably didn't know you saw at all is Clone Trooper Nax. He served in the 501st and was a part of Torrent Company, Rex's elite group within the Legion. He's seen at some of the first major battles of the Clone Wars. In the Clone Wars movie, he's at Christophsis and Teth, after which only roughly six clones from Torrent Company survive. On Umbara, he sustained significant injuries from a shrapnel hit. We see Kix pulling him to safety in this scene. Unfortunately, his injuries were too much. Nax never returned to the front lines due to the extensive medical care that he needed. When the Empire came to power, Nax was cast aside, forced into homelessness. We see him in the Kenobi show begging for food when Nax and Obi-Wan meet. It almost seems as if the two recognized each other, which wouldn't be surprising since Obi-Wan fought with the 501st extensively. Nax is such a heartbreaking sort, but at least he survived the war, unlike Commander Phil. Phil was a veteran commander who had been assigned to Kit Fisto's former Padawan, Nadar Veb. The trio were on a mission to capture New Gunray, which turned out to be a trap played by Grievous. Kit Fisto Fisto, Nadar, and Phil are lured into a pit with a creature called Gore. Gore nearly took out Kit Fisto, and then instantly turned his attention to Phil, crushing the clone commander with his spiked tail, which killed Phil. Another clone commander that did survive, though, is Commander Stone. Part of the course on guard, Stone didn't see much action in the war, but he was assigned the task of protecting Jar Jar when Dar Jar went to negotiate with Hondo for the release of Anakin and Obi-Wan. You can never trust pirates, though. They shot down Jar Jar's ship, which crashed onto Florum killing most of the crew and Jar Jar's associate, Senator Karras. Stone was then left with the impossible task of keeping himself, his men, and Jar Jar alive. But he succeeded. While the chain of command rested on Representative Binks, Stone basically gave Jar Jar his own plan for defeating the pirates, which worked beautifully. Anakin and Obi-Wan escape, and the whole group leaves Slorm as if nothing ever happened. Stone and his men live to fight another day. Alright, we've got one last clone commander to talk about here. And that is Commander Apo of the 501st Legion. We see Apo as a sergeant taking orders from General Pong Krell in Lombara. Later, he is promoted to commander and leads the 501st behind Vader when they stormed the Jedi Temple. While Apo was intimidating Bail Organa, a Jedi Padawan came up from behind and killed Apo and the men that were with him. Obviously, in Legends, Apo has a lot more lore, but I'm just focusing on his canon appearances. Apo led the firing squad that was supposed to kill Fives and Jesse, but we see that Apo and his men were not willing to blindly follow orders, as they instead shot the ground beside Fives and Jesse rather than kill them. Clearly, Apo knew that what they were doing was wrong and thought better of it, which gives him a lot of points in my book. One clone in that firing squad was very much ready to shoot Fives and Jesse, though. That man is Clone Trooper Dogma. Dogma is the embodiment of a lot of different emotions that many clones would have been feeling during the war. Initially, Dogma is completely obedient to orders without question, no matter who his commander is. A lot of people hate Dogma for his blind support of General Krell and his horrible tactic, not to mention the many times Dogma tried to turn in other members of the 501st for insubordination. But let's face it, the Jedi commanders were supposed to be trustworthy. The only Jedi Dogma had closely worked with before Pong Krell was Anakin, who 
who had given his men no reason to doubt his orders or to disobey him. So when Dogma saw his brothers disobeying a new Jedi commander, who was presumably as good as Anakin was, obviously it wasn't right in his eyes for Five, Rex, and the others to blatantly disobey. So when Fives and Jesse were supposed to be executed, Dogma saw as the proper punishment for their actions. Luckily, he was vastly outnumbered in this opinion, and Fives and Jesse didn't get killed on that day. Dogma remained loyal to Pon Krell to the very end, even to the point that Krell had been captured by the clones. It took General Krell's direct confession to finally convince Dogma of the truth. Krell had been using Dogma's loyalty the entire time. Dogma didn't waste any time taking action. He stole one of Fives' pistols and quickly executed Krell before he was taken away. So while Dogma's loyalty was taken way too far, once he realized his error, he made up for it, in my opinion. Dogma's young comrade in the 501st, Tup, is the next clone on this list. Umbara is his first campaign with the 501st, and his inexperience is part of the reason why he sticks with Dogma for most of the Umbara episode, as Tup was eager to follow the rules and prove himself. The important thing about Tup, though, is that he is the catalyst for a lot of important character arcs. On Rango Venda, his inhibitor chip malfunctioned, causing him to execute Jedi General Tiplar. After the Separatists tried to kidnap Tup, it became clear to Anakin and the rest of the 501st that Tup was not safe on the front lines, so he was taken to Kamino with Five so the Republic could learn more about the situation. Fives, Kix, and other clones wouldn't have discovered the inhibitor chips without Tup's incident. If it weren't for Darth Sidious, Fives would have been able to save the entire Republic because of Tup. Tup was able to live out his last moments without any mental issues, as the chip was removed. As he said, the nightmares were finally over for him, and he was at peace. My favorite thing about Tup is his teardrop tattoo and the matching art he had on his helmet. It's what makes Tup one of the most recognizable clones out there. These next two clones are super recognizable too, but in a different way from Tup. First, there's Scuba clone commander Monk. Monk was the clone leader of the entire Republic Scuba forces during the underwater war on Mon Cala. Monk has taken prisoner multiple times in the war through no fault of his own, but he remains calm and collected, holding out until the Gungan army comes to turn the tide of the war. While Monk's equipment is not much different from any other scuba trooper, he still looks really awesome. His armor's unique color scheme allows him to easily blend in with the marine life on the ocean floor of Mon Cala. The other clone I wanted to mention here is veteran Y-Wing pilot Goji. His name is a tribute to Godzilla, and his insanely cool armor art is a depiction of Godzilla as well. What makes Goji notable aside from that, though, is that he was the pilot who dropped the Republic's experimental electro-proton bomb at the Battle of Malastare. So Goji literally defeated an entire droid army all by himself. Obviously, in order for Goji to be trusted to carry out this mission with an experimental bomb, he must have been a very trustworthy and experienced pilot. But this next clone was a much better pilot than Goji. No disrespect to Goji, this guy's just that good. It's the 501st most senior pilot, Oddball. Oddball was at pretty much every mission the 501st ever went on. Oddball was promoted to the rank of commander after his exemplary service at the first Battle of Geonosis because of his skill with numerous starfighters. Oddball was adept behind the controls of a Y-Wing, B-Wing, and ARC-170 Starfighter, among others. On Umbara, Oddball provided crucial air support at the perfect moment. The 501st was ambushed by Umbaran forces, so Rex calls in an airstrike for extra help. Just to be safe, he moves his platoons away from the Umbaran position, in case the bombers overshoot his coordinates, which would have been easy given the pitch black darkness shrouding Umbara. But there was no need. Oddball hit the spot perfectly, obliterating the Umbarans. Oddball is also seen with Anakin and Obi-Wan at the Battle of Coruscant in Revenge of the Sith. Oddball and his men punched a hole straight through the droid forces so Obi-Wan and Anakin could make a run at the Invisible Hand to rescue the Chancellor. The trooper who noted Oddball's accuracy on Umbara was his friend in the final first, Arc Trooper Jesse. Good old Oddball. Always on target. Jesse had a large tattoo and drawing of the Republic's insignia, a sign of his patriotism for the Republic. He was a very loyal trooper, but unlike Dogma, who was loyal to the Jedi, Jesse was loyal to his clone leader, Rex. Jesse was with Fives and Hardcase when they destroyed a Separatist supply ship above Umbara, a crucial turning point in the conflict. Luckily, as I mentioned earlier, Fives and Jesse avoided execution, despite Dogma's insistence. Jesse ended up outliving many of his 501st comrades through the war, eventually becoming an ARC trooper after Ringo Venda. He participated in the Battle of Anaxis and had a major role in the Siege of Mandalore, where he was seen fighting Mandalorians in the air with a jetpack. Unfortunately, Jesse didn't have his inhibitor chip removed before Oro 66. When he found out that Rex had gone rogue with Ahsoka, he had no choice but to command his men to kill them. Jesse ended up dying when the Republic cruiser crashed into the moon below. Ahsoka was able to recover his body and bury it alongside his fallen brothers as a tribute for their service. The clones of the 212th on Umbara died a much worse death than Jesse, though. Later in the Umbara campaign, Pong Krell orchestrated a battle where the clones of Obi-Wan's 212th battalion were attacked by the Fova first. Rex is able to stop the battle when he comes across the 212th's platoon leader, Waxer. Waxer is able to help Rex connect the dots back to General Krell, just as he dies. For me, this is one of the most depressing deaths in all of the Clone Wars shot by his own brothers, who didn't even know it was him. On Ryloth, Waxer and his partner Boyle stumble across a little Twi'lek girl named Numa in the wreckage of a building. Boyle wanted to leave her behind, but Waxer's conscience told him they needed to help her, so he went back to take her with them. 
Waxer and Boyle ended up saving Numa from the droids and reuniting her with the Twi'lek people. To remind himself of her, Waxer drew a picture of her on his helmet. Waxer also helped to save Obi-Wan and Clone Trooper Trapper from Point Rain at Geonosis. As I mentioned earlier, Numa would go on to be an important fighter in Sham Sandula's rebellion against the Empire and we actually get to see her again in Rebels, all thanks to Waxer's extraordinary compassion. Waxer would have never gone on that mission and found Numa if it weren't for his leader in the Tooth Welt, Commander Cody, who was told by Obi-Wan to pick two of his best men for a mission. Then Cody promptly chose Boyle and Waxer for the job. Clearly, Cody knew his men well because they were the right troopers for the mission. Cody led the Tooth Welt under General Kenobi. Just like Rex was the perfect compliment to Anakin, Cody also complimented Obi-Wan. Cody tended to follow procedure and protocol, and was a more cautious commander as opposed to the risk-taking of Rex. We see their different personalities in play when they work together with the Domino Squad to save the Rishi Outpost. Cody also fought in pretty much every major campaign of the Clone Wars, including the likes of the Second Battle of Geonosis, Lucia, Umbara, and Ryla. He participated in the defense of Kamino alongside Rex as well. Cody has the most live-action appearances of any clone, and he is seen alongside Obi-Wan in Revenge of the Sith at Utapal. As a clone who followed the book, he never thought to investigate any of the inhibitor chip findings for himself. He followed through Order 66, but luckily his men didn't kill Obi-Wan. Cody was integrated into Imperial service, but after the horrors he witnessed on Kashyyyk when the Empire enslaved the Wookiees, he'd had enough. He deserted the army, never to be seen again. It goes without saying that Cody is an elite soldier. The sheer number of battles and situations he survived is a testament to his ability. But if I'm talking about elite troopers, I can't go without mentioning Delta Squad. Delta Squad consists of four clone commandos, Boss, Fixer, Sev, and Scorch. Most of their missions and stories are in Legends, but thankfully they make brief canon appearances in the Clone Wars and the Bad Batch, so at the very least we do know that they exist. However, I think we can infer from their Legends backstory, whether it's the Republic Commando video game or the Republic Commando books following Cal Scarada, that the Delta Squad is the best of the best in the Grand Army of the Republic. While their canon history remains unwritten, I think we can definitely say that Delta Squad are among the best clones in all of Star Wars. Also among the best clones is Arc Trooper Echo. Echo was a part of Domino Squad alongside his fellow Arc Trooper 5s. On his rookie assignment to the Rishi Moon, Echo helped Rex, Cody, and the others with stopping the droids. Afterward, Echo helped defend Kamina. For his bravery, he was made an Arc Trooper with 5s. At the Citadel, Echo bravely tried to stop a commando droid from blowing up their escape shell, but he failed. He was thought by his comrades to have died there. Personally, I thought he was gone for good until the Clone Wars Season 7 rolled around. It turns out Echo had survived the Citadel. The Separatists had captured him and were using his brain to predict Republic strategy. After the Republic was repeatedly getting outsmarted at an axis, Rex knew that something was up. Rex connected the dots and figured that Echo might be alive, so Rex took a team and rescued him. Echo made a plan to use his knowledge of the Separatists to the Republic's advantage. Rex and Echo snuck on board Admiral Trench's flagship, and Echo interfaced with the Separatist strategy algorithm, and he was able to completely foil the Separatist plan, ultimately defeating them. He was then dubbed the Hero of an Axis. I think it speaks to Echo's excellence that the Separatists were able to only use his knowledge of Republic tactics and strategy to such a great advantage, on such a huge scale. That's why I ranked Echo so far up on this list. But now, we're headed into the top 10, starting with the 501st Medic, Kix. Kix saved the lives of countless clones during the war. We see Kix pulling injured bodies to safety and administering life-saving medical aid on countless battlefields across the galaxy. Kix tried to help save his friend Tup when Tup's inhibitor chip malfunctioned. Obviously, there was nothing Kix could do to save Tup, but Kix felt like he could have done more to help Tup. This event stuck with Kix and led him to do some investigating on his own after Fives' death. But Count Dooku got wind of Kix's searching, and Kix was captured by the Separatists and placed in a frozen stasis. Fifty years later, pirates found Kix and unfroze him. Kix joined up with the pirates and lived out the rest of his days having adventures across the galaxy. So Kix was the longest living clone trooper of all of them. Unfortunately, one that should have lived longer was Commander Thorn. Thorn was a shock trooper and a part of the Coruscant Guard. Because of his assignment on Coruscant, Thorn rarely saw action, but when the time came, he was unafraid to do his duty. Thorn and his unit were sent to Scipio to protect Senator Amidala and ensure a peaceful transfer of power as Rush Clovis was made leader of the banking clan. However, Thorn and his men were extremely outmatched when an entire Separatist fleet invaded. Thorn bravely made a stand with his troops to delay the droid invasion for as long as possible. Even when he was completely surrounded by droids, Thorn still managed to hold on for a few seconds longer, taking as many droids as he could with him. One clone that also made an incredible last stand, Heavy. A lot of fans have Heavy as their favorite clone of all time, and for good reason. He was part of Domino Squad alongside the likes of Fives and Echo. On their first assignment to the Rishi Outpost, Heavy, Fives, and Echo escaped the Separatist attack. Afterward, they linked up with Rex and Cody and came up with a plan to retake the base. The plan went smoothly until the clones realized their bomb detonator wasn't working. It would have to be done manually. Heavy, being the munitions expert and heavy weapons trooper, volunteered to do the job. While his comrades escaped, he heroically mowed down battle droids until the last possible second. With his last breaths, he detonated the bombs, which completely obliterated the Rishi base. This alerted the Republic to the Separatist invasion, which bought them time to save Kamino and the future of the clone army. Heavy died saving each and every one of his brothers. 
Another heavy weapon specialist was Hardcase. He was a veteran in the 501st Legion, and a clone who had a passion for explosives and heavy weapons. He was known for his energy and aggressive personality. He served with the 501st on many campaigns, the most notable of which was Umbara. While attacking an Umbaran base, it became clear to Hardcase that General Poncarell's full frontal assault plan wasn't going to cut it. So Fives and Hardcase went on a mission of their own to steal Umbaran starfighters, which could kill the Umbaran walkers. Their heroics saved countless clones who would have been murdered in General Krell's disastrous planning. Disobeying orders once again, Fives, Jesse, and Hardcase used the Umbaran fighters to take down a Separatist warship. The Separatists were prepared though, and the ship's blast door sealed off the core from the clone's fighters. Hardcase quickly realized that the only way to destroy the ship would be to get out of the fighters and use the explosives to get through the blast doors. Hardcase did not hesitate to sacrifice himself, knowing how important it was to cut Separatist supply lines. He gave his life for the rest of his brothers so that the Umbara campaign would be successful. Another clone who didn't hesitate to sacrifice himself was Captain Keeley. This might be a bit of a controversial choice, since Keeley only appears in one Clone Wars episode so you'll have to let me know if you agree with me in the comments. But his last stand alongside Master D is iconic, and it's one of my favorite Clone Wars moments of all. Keeley and Master D are able to hold off the droid army just long enough in order to allow the Twi'leks to escape, saving countless lives at the cost of their own. Keeley took down a ton of droids, and at one point was hit and knocked unconscious, but he got back up and kept fighting. We can do this, General! Uh, let's make the end memorable! Now we're in the top five. These are some of the best clones of all time, no question. Starting out in fifth place, I've got Clone Commando Gregor. To me, Gregor is such a tragic story. He was presumed dead when his ship crashed on the backwater world of Abafar. However, Gregor survived, but he suffered from amnesia, so he had no idea who he was. He lived a simple secluded life on the world until R2-D2 and his team of droids stumble upon his home while on a mission to foil a Separatist plot. Shortly after meeting the droid crew, he willingly and selflessly sacrifices himself to save them from the Separatist droids. But somehow, Gregor survived again. He managed to find his way back to the Republic and ended up living with Rex and Wolf after the Clone Wars. Gregor was instrumental in helping the rebels on the fall who were fighting against imperial rule. Once again, Gregor willingly put himself into harm's way in order to protect his friends. This time, unfortunately, his luck caught up with him, and he was killed by Imperials. As Gregor said in Rebels, he was one of the few lucky clones to have died fighting for a cause that he chose to fight for. At the number 4 spot is Commander Wolf. Wolf commanded the Wolf Pack, one of the most elite clone battalions led by Master Plo Koon. Wolf was a fearless trooper who led by example. He lost his right eye after a close encounter with Ventress, which was a clear sign of his bravery. Wolf and Plo Koon led many rescue missions together, rescuing Master Adigali on one occasion, and saving Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, and Anakin on another. The Wolf Pack also saved Anakin and Mace Windu from the wreckage of a Republic cruiser. Most notably, Wolf and Plo saved the entire Togrus and slave population on Kadavo, as I mentioned earlier. At some point along the line, Wolf figured out that he had an inhibitor chip and had it removed. Unfortunately, he had this revelation after Order 66, so he wasn't able to save any Jedi or clones, but he did help the Rebellion on Lothal after his retirement. The third best clone is 99. While he's not an active service member like the rest of the clones, 99 still does his duty. It's not his fault that he was defective. Rather than pouting about it though, 99 makes the best of it by helping out where he can on Kamino. When he finally gets a chance in a combat situation when the Separatists invade Kamino, 99 doesn't disappoint. He helps Cody, Rex, and some cadets to the armory so they can hold off incoming droids, which helps save the Kaminoan Command Center. To me, his death is one of the saddest in the entire Star Wars franchise. But it's fitting too. 99 finally got the chance to fight for the Republic, and I think he wouldn't have wanted to go out any other way than fighting alongside his brothers in battle. In second place, I've got the leader of the 501st Legion, Captain Rex. I think we all had Rex as our favorite clone or even Star Wars character at some point. He's awesome. Whether it's his playful interactions with Ahsoka or his fearlessness on the battlefield, Rex embodies all the right traits a clone should have. He's tough on his men, but he also empathizes with them. He obeys orders from his superiors, but he doesn't do so blindly. Sometimes he disobeys when he realizes it's the better tactical or moral decision, and he's not afraid to offer plans or ideas of his own, some of which are often better than Anakin's. He's fought in pretty much every kind of situation imaginable whether it's stealth missions with a small team or on a massive battlefront. He survived more missions than anyone, and he even managed to make it through Order 66. And he doesn't stop serving either, helping out the Rebel Alliance on many occasions. But the best clone trooper of all is CT-5555, or Art Trooper Fives. I think Fives' death really shook a lot of us. That episode changed the entire trajectory of my childhood. But seriously though, Fives is a great clone in so many ways. 
As an ARC trooper, he has some of the most elite combat skills in the Republic Army. Fives went on numerous campaigns with the 501st, most notably fighting on Kamino, at the Citadel, on Umbara, and at Ringo Vendo. He was close friends with Rex and respected by Anakin. But of course, the most important thing he did was discovering the origins of the clone army and their inhibitor chips. He was so close to potentially saving the galaxy, but of course Sidious made sure that didn't happen. That's what makes his death so excruciating to watch. The thing is though, he discovered these things because of the love for his brother, Tup. Fives was dedicated to finding the cause of Tup's illness because he wanted justice for Tup. Fives knew it wasn't Tup that killed Master Templar. Turns out, he was right. And if you like this video, you should definitely check out this one on the screen. I know you'll love it.